You're going to have more days you don't want to do something than you are going to want to. Most days, you're not going to be pumped up. Most days, you're going to feel weak. Most days, you're going to want to stay in bed. Most days, you're going to feel like most people do. But if you do what most people do, which is give yourself reasons to not get the tasks done, not get to work, not get out of bed, you're going to end up like most people, barely getting by, being unhappy with their lives. You got to make a different decision. You got to decide enough is enough. You've had enough of being average and ordinary. You're tired of being mediocre. You're now going to push yourself. It's going to feel better when it's over. You know that when you get done doing the hard thing, it's going to feel better. Waking up, working out, taking care of some tedious task. You know you will feel better when it is done. You also know that if you don't do the hard thing, the thing that you don't want to do, that you don't feel like doing, you know if you don't do it, you're going to feel inferior. You know you're going to feel weak. And that feeling, that horrible feeling, you know that feeling too. You know it. You know it's true. Those are the two outcomes. One will cause you some short-term gratification. You'll get to sleep a little bit more. You won't have to put out during a workout. You don't have to do this tedious task. You'll get some short-term gratification, but the long-term regret will be strong and it will inflict pain on you. Successful people do one thing more than others. Make movement. They get it done. While most people are slacking off, relaxing, wasting their time, the winners in the world are putting in work. Studying their craft, practicing, running drills on how to perform better, putting in all those extra hours when everyone's already gone home. And of course you'll get tired, you'll get worn out, you'll feel exhausted and lazy and not want to work, and you'll have some really, really rough days. But when that happens, you gotta tell yourself, I will not stop. I don't care what I have to go through. I'm gonna get this done, no matter what. You do what you know you need to do to move forward. And when you do that thing, you know you're gonna feel strong and you're gonna feel gratified and you're gonna feel worthy of this life. That's how you're gonna feel when you do what you're supposed to do. Remember that. Remember that the pain right now will absolutely pay off in the future. And the capitulation and the conceding defeat to weakness, that will absolutely result in the pain of regret and remorse later. You know this to be true, so don't allow it. Remember the feeling of victory that comes from doing the right thing, the hard thing. Remember that feeling and then go get it done. The work comes before the belief. You're going to have to do some work and you're going to have to keep doing it consistently even when you're not seeing the results, even when you feel like giving up. And eventually, results will begin to sprout as you do this. And when that happens, you're going to build faith, build belief in what it is you're doing. You start to realize, hey, I can really do this. This is actually working. And as you work more, more success sprouts. You're going to start to create something. You have no motivation, you have no drive, you have no ambition, but you're going to force it to happen anyway because that's what bad do and that's what you are. You're going to go through day by day by day doing the work regardless of how you feel like it. And then what's going to happen is you're going to see a little bit of a result. And when you see that little bit of result, you're going to get happy. And what's going to happen in your brain is it's going to open up the possibilities for you of what you can actually achieve because now you can clearly see that if I do the work, this result will happen. And when this result starts to happen, you get excited. And guess what comes with the excitement, the motivation? The inches we need to become dominant in any field of life are all around us. It's in every task, every project, every mission, every day, every second. When you do the small things, how do you do them? Because if you're putting in 120% in those small tasks, I know for sure you're doing it in everything else. It's the people who are willing to do twice as much as anyone else. Those are the people who end up winning. You go the extra mile, you push through the extra round, you do those extra reps. That's what defines if you become first or forgotten. Champions are focused on the goal. They don't have time to be doing stuff that's not gonna help them toward the goal. 
And so what you're focusing on throughout the course of the day, it has to change. What you're looking at, what you're reading, what you're watching, the conversations you have. You've got to be focused entirely on your dreams, entirely on your goals. When you're great, you don't just focus on a week. You don't just focus on a month. You don't just focus on a year. You concentrate on the 24 hours that's in front of you and work as hard as possible to nail it. You dominate in the dark. When nobody sees you, when no one knows what you're doing, those late hours and early mornings where you're working your out, nothing feels better than giving everything you have to the grind. And a lot of people are confused as to how high drive, high success people can wake up every day and go at it. It's because they know that even if they feel bad, even if they don't feel like doing it, if they push through just a little bit, just a few more days, they're gonna see something that is gonna start to make them feel good. It's gonna give them belief, it's gonna get them motivation, and it's gonna make them feel like doing this is absolutely worth it, and not only worth it, but exciting. So if you're in this phase where it doesn't feel like it's worth it, where it doesn't feel like it's very fun, just remember, if you keep going and you do not let your feelings dictate what your actions will be, the results will always be there. When you get to sit back and unwind after working yourself to the bone for those goals and dreams, you'll feel a sense of pride you might have never felt before. But you only ever get to that point if you get up and get to work. The time of year, we try to make our dreams come true. But the reality of all that is sacrifice. And those dreams quickly become nightmares. But in those nightmares are where our demons lie. That's the domain in which they know we don't want to go into all those early mornings. It wakes up all these things that we failed at. Those demons are in those nightmares. That's what keeps us from accomplishing our dreams. So this year, your back is turned to the doorway. Because they know you ain't going in the nightmare land, but you're going in there. And when the backs are turned, you're going to rear naked choke them us out. Every one of them. That's the mentality you must have and always have. People want to find peace immediately. You're going to find peace from going to war with yourself. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. We are in control of our mind. We believe it's the other way around. No, we put in our minds what we should do. We have to reprogram it and tell us, no, 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 we're good. This sucks, but it's okay. If you don't program yourself, life will program you. In order to begin to reinvent your life, you've got to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort. You really have got to put all of yourself into it. It's very challenging to act, to do those things. There are times when you're looking at it and you say, I know I need to do this, but I don't feel like it. What most of us are looking for is a special feeling you know? of, oh, I feel great this morning. I'm going to get out of bed and get a quick five miles and go to the gym. If you're looking for that feeling, let me tell you one thing, ain't going to come. You have to learn to do when you don't want to do. You're going to bring that savage mentality out of yourself. The animalistic mode. You think a savage gets up for how he feels or how she feels? Then it's do it. Learn to be your best self when you're least motivated. Stop looking for a feeling to control what goes on in your life. You should, you should quit quitting. Any path you take to get where you want to be, if that place is worthwhile to go, it's going to be hard. So quit judging your quitting based upon how hard something is. Because every single path that you could possibly take to get somewhere where you want to be is going to be hard. Struggle, pain, misery, frustration, those are signs that you are on the right path and making progress. Nobody that is where you want to be has gotten there without these struggles, without the bleeding, without the pain, without the depression, without the misery. Nobody. And if you want to be something great, you are going to have to learn to accept the struggle as part of the recipe. Every single day you need to look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what am I willing to do to get what I want? And if the answer is, whatever the f I have to, you'll get there in time. You're setting the example every single day of your life. You have to constantly over that machine. The machine is your mind. You gotta keep challenging it every day. The price of regret is much heavier than the price of discipline. You never want to wake up one day, one week, one month, one year down the road and go, 
man, I wish I would have listened to my gut. I wish I would have done this thing. You don't want to live in regret. If there's something you want to get done in work, your relationships, school, whatever it is, do it. Life is one big head game. And once you learn to play that game, it's no longer a game anymore at all. You can start living your life. When you're working on a business or in life, things will always go wrong. That's the human condition. Look, we've all been quitters, everyone. Nobody's journey is seamless or smooth. We all stumble, we all have setbacks. The question is not if some of these things will happen to you, they will. The question is, what do we do next? You've got to have resiliency. If I don't quit, I can't fail. If I just simply don't quit, I cannot fail. Hold fast, don't, I know you wanna give up, I know you wanna quit, I know you're tired, but hold fast. Some days, of course, I'll get tired. Some days, I will get beat up. Some days, I will get knocked down and I will have some bad days. But I will not stop. This is an everyday gig. Every day is a Monday. And you might not like that. Me, I love it. To me, every day is a beginning. A new day, a new week, a new shot at life. An opportunity to come out of the gate like a man possessed and attack the day without mercy. Today, I'm putting the pressure on. I am the aggressor. I am on the attack. You don't get this far. You don't get to this point and just stop. Most people spend their life not wanting to deal with the pain of rejection, the pain of defeat, the pain of being disappointed, the pain of losing, the pain of failure, the pain of being criticized, the pain of not being liked, the pain, the pain, the pain. That's called life. Now, will it be turbulent? Yes. Will it be easy? No. Will you have some opposition? Yes. Will I make a lot of mistakes? Yes. Will I get hurt? Yeah. But guess what? There's no gain without pain. Don't judge the possibilities for what you can do based upon the circumstances, because the circumstances won't determine who you are. The possibilities for you are unlimited. If you're in a rebuilding process, it's unlimited. If you're coming back from adversity and devastation, it's unlimited of what you can do. Doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. Doesn't matter how many flops you've had. I see it only as an investment of what you learn from life, of what's possible for you. Struggle, pain, misery, frustration, those are signs that you are on the right path. Nobody that is where you want to be has gotten there without these struggles, without the pain. And if you want to be something great, you are going to have to learn to accept the struggle as part of the recipe. Every single day you need to look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what am I willing to do to get what I want? And if the answer is whatever the fuck I have to, you'll get there in time. It's necessary you take responsibility for it. That you don't make it happen, that you don't give up, that you don't take any objection or disappointment or defeats personally, that you keep on keeping on, that you don't decide that I can't make it because you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, that you realize that's a part of the program. See, as long as you breathe, you got a shot at your dream. And here's something you've got to resolve. Not over till I get through. Not over till I get over. Not over till I get what I want. Don't care over today, look out. I'm going to come back and take the hinges off. That's how you got to do that. You got to have that kind of courage, that type of determination. If you want to make it happen, it's you. But you got to take personal responsibility to make it happen. We can point out many things that could make it inconvenient or can slow us down. But ultimately, it's you. We sleep one third of our fucking lives and we think we can take fucking days off. We think we have the right to sit back and give ourselves fucking options on which way we're gonna go in life. Am I gonna run today? Am I gonna work out today? Well, it's Christmas. It's New Year's. Do you think time gives a fuck that it's Christmas, that it's New Year's? You give yourself too many fucking options. Time is running out. You keep on sitting around wondering what the fuck you wanna do. You're just gonna run out of time. Stop falling the fucking crowd. They may take time off, but you can't afford to. Short-term thinking says, the donut tastes good, eat it. Short-term thinking says, one workout doesn't matter, I can skip it. Short-term thinking encourages you to make 
short-term emotional decisions that hurt you in the long run. And they definitely don't move you toward your overall strategic goals. The more short-term decisions you make, decisions that are based on that immediate gratification, decisions based on quick emotional satisfaction, the further from the path you will stray. Don't do that. Think strategic. Think long-term. You need tactical wins. You need to win battles in order to win the war. You need to get out of bed, you need to run, you need to work out, you need to read and study and practice, and you need to do things that you don't necessarily want to do. If you do the work consistently, if you invest in yourself consistently, one plus one is always gonna equal two. Two plus two is gonna equal four. In 10 years of motherfucking work, when everybody else is partying, making excuses, doing the cool thing on the weekend is going to pay off. What's your standard? I don't care what it is, but what is your standard? I got some standards. I've been waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning since I was 19 years old. That's a non-negotiable. Every morning at 3, I'm up. That's my standard. I'm telling you, set a standard. You can't be no champion if you don't have a standard. The men who set a standard are always the ones who are champions. As a champion, we ain't trying to cut corners. We ain't trying to see how much we can do and still be successful. I got a standard. I want to be the best. Finish. Effort is not good enough. Ain't nobody paying you for effort. You don't get paid for effort. You don't get paid for trying. Execute. Set the standard, then raise the standard, then uphold the standard every single day. You going up against other champions? You think you're going to get 50%? You think you're going to get 70%? You think you're going to get 80%? You're good. You're real good at what you do. But some of you don't finish. The real beast. The real beast is when they legs give out. The real beast when they tired. The real beast find a way to pull something out when nobody else ain't got nothing. Success is never on discount. Success is never on sale. You never see Rolls Royce say, please, come buy us. Why? Because a Rolls Royce, when they make it, they make it one at a time. And they take their time and they handcraft it. It never goes on sale. And some of y'all in this room, you want your dream to go on sale. It's never going to go on sale. But if you want to be average, they give an average out. They got discounts on goods. But if you want to be great, you got to pay blood, sweat, tears, and you got to pay every single there are no shortcuts to greatness. To be great, there are no days off. All of us, at some time or another, have agonized over making a decision. Some decisions are major decisions. And also there are a lot of small decisions that we don't make. That they tax our minds, they drain our energy. They create a lot of anxiety and nervousness and mental torment. Because we don't take care of it. We decide not to decide, which is a decision. Imagine you're on your deathbed, and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. And they're standing around your bed, angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? How much time do you spend working on you? How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? What kind of investment have you made in you? If your mentality is, I can't wait to see what happens great to me in 2022. You are going to get fucking sh** as a result. Life does not reward people who wait to see what happens. What you put in, you will get out. So if you want 2022 to actually be different, you have to not only be willing to visualize and manifest, you have to be willing to grit it out. You have to be willing to push through discomfort. Nothing that you're about to try or do or achieve that is worthwhile is going to be comfortable for you during the process of creating it. And I want you to take the word hope and I want you to throw it on the motherfucking ground and I want you to replace it with the word I will f***ing do in 2022. 
Woe be unto you if you go into another year and waste another year with the old mentality while somebody's in the hospital begging God for the opportunity that you have right now. You better step into this moment. You're only here for a short time. If you're not going to show people what's possible, who the f*** else is? Who's going to show your kids? Who's going to show your aunts and uncles? Who's going to show your f***ing nieces and nephews? Are you going to fail those people? Are you going to buy into the narrative that you can't? Stand up for your dreams. Stand up for what you want in your life. Decide that your life is so meaningful to you, that you love you and you love life so much that you're going to stand up for something you want. You don't want to be a spectator. You want to get out in the field where the action is and you will be amazed. After the struggle, there will be a calm period and things will begin to click for you. Come out here with what you got. You don't have enough money? Don't worry about it. You got the dream. You must be patient, persistent, and positive no matter what. But aren't there some guarantees you can give us? Yes, you're going to die. You can't get out of life alive. So I'm saying to you, you got six months to live. Live your life now. Live your dreams now. Start acting like this is your last day on the planet. You don't like the way your life is going? You have the power to change it. You don't have to be a failure. You don't have to be a quitter. You don't have to be anything. You don't want to be. As long as you decide to change your mind. You got to get to the point in your life where you say, I have had it. I've had it with going in a restaurant, looking on one side to see what I want to eat, and then look on the other side to see what I could afford. I would had it living like that. I would had it borrowing money from people. I would had it living like a cringing animal. When you don't have any money, it runs your blood pressure up. You hear me? And you've got to decide, I have had it. I'm not going to live like this anymore. And let me tell you something, you deserve it. You deserve a better life. There is more to your life than you've been living. You deserve it. When you commit yourself to do better, that's the moment you start to see real change. You better be committed or you ain't gonna make it. You have to be committed through the storm and the rain and the heartache and the pain and the disappointment. It's a commitment. It's not a feeling. Commitments don't have nothing to do with your feelings. You do it because you're supposed to. Your feelings will never cooperate with your dreams. Beat your feelings into captivity because when you beat your feelings into captivity, that is what discipline is. The very first level is you seeing it. You gotta know what it looks like, tastes like, feel like. Because you don't, you're gonna compromise. Find those goals that mean something to you. Write them out, read them every day. Develop a plan of action. Make up your mind that you have the power within yourself to reinvent you. You've got to work on it. When other folk are having a good time, you've got to have the strength of character to concentrate, to read, to digest information. If you want it bad enough, nothing's going to stop you. Not fear, not somebody's opinion, not how hard your childhood was, not self-doubt, nothing will stop you. You can do what you put your mind to. And if you continue to put your mind to it, the game opens up new levels. And each new level that gets opened up, you're able to adapt a different mindset and a different approach. You can stop at that level or you can go, I want more levels. I want more fucking levels. You can make every dream you've ever had a reality, but you've got to be willing to stand and fight for it. You've got to be willing to give up your time for it. Give up your peace. Give up your blood. Give up your sweat. Give up your tears. Give every single thing you possibly can to that dream. And you think greatness goes on sale, but true quality never goes on sale. The only thing that goes on sale is cheap stuff. The real high quality stuff, it costs what it costs. They're not trying to get somebody average to buy it. You got to have a certain amount of money or you ought not to be in here. Greatness costs what it costs. There is a price tag to greatness. Nobody's going to hand it to you. You've got to grind for it. You've got to stick with that thing for as long as it takes and pay whatever price is required. And while you're suffering from self-doubt, other people are intimidated by your full potential. If your past self could see where you're at today, think of how impressed they would be. 
One of the greatest ways you can overcome self-doubt is to realize how far you've come. Maybe you're not exactly where you want to be, but you're a lot better than where you were. And the key is to wake up every single day, put one foot in front of the other, keep moving, and keep growing. You gotta have some strong reasons for why you're doing this because when you get out into the arena of life, you're gonna get your ass kicked and your reasons will be the only thing that will keep you going. When the dream is worth it to you, you'll go through hell to get it. Who cares how long it takes? What matters is that if it's something that gives your life value, you'll do whatever's required. When you feel that it's worth it, you don't need any guarantees if things will work out. You don't need to know the outcome because you know that you'll either find a way or make a way. When it's worth it, you exert greater effort and greater effort releases the creative genius in you. When you go up in there and you start going at it passionately and working with it and working with it and working with it it will reveal its secrets to you and you discover things about yourself that you don't know right now there's people in here far superior than me but there's no one in here who will work harder than me we get up at 5 30 in the morning it's pitching rain outside our competition sleeping i love that i will not be outworked period where i excel is ridiculous sickening work ethic while the other guys sleeping i'm working while the other guys eating i'm working talent you have naturally skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft the commodity the majority of people who aren't achieving the things that they want is strictly based on hustle it's strictly based on being outworked it's strictly based on missing crucial opportunities you might outwork me for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, but you ain't gonna beat me over a year. You can't outwork me over two years. I'm gonna get you eventually. I'm a dripping damn faucet. I just keep coming at you. I'm too damn tough to give up. Most people half half their life all the time. I knew they were gonna get tired. They were gonna get down. They quit improving themselves. They start sleeping in. I'm not gonna do that stuff. I'm gonna get up early. I'm gonna keep getting wide. I'm gonna stay relentless. I might not be the fastest, the strongest, the smartest, none of that crap, but I'll, I'll work you and I flat out want it more than you. It's relentlessness, man. It's pushing past barriers. It's every time you get somewhere, it's wanting to go to the next level. You guys are entitled to sh What you're entitled to is an opportunity to show up and be your best. Everyone's like, oh, Craig, you're lucky. You got this, Craig, you're lucky. Everything you do is luck. Bullshit, because before it was luck. It was a belief. And every day with no one watching at five in the morning by myself, I trained it because I believed in it. In hopes that one day my trained ability collided with an opportunity to show it off. That's what luck is. That's what success is. Nothing subjective in there. It's all you. You gotta look at how much you're working. You gotta look at how much effort you're making. The intention you're putting out there. You gotta cross the line in life. You gotta go where nobody else wants to go. You gotta work the hours nobody else wants the hours. You have to resolve yourself today that you're going to dominate. That you're not average and ordinary. There has to become a point where you make a decision. We're gonna dominate. We're here to win. We are not here to play. And that takes some intestinal fortitude. I'm where I'm at because I just flat decided I'm gonna be a player. I decided at some point I get to choose who I am. The world doesn't tell me who I am. I write these chapters. You don't need the world's permission. You don't need anyone's permission to be great. Only permission you need is from who stares at you back in the mirror every day and a willingness to do the hard work longer, harder, and better than anyone. So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna buy another success program looking for the secret recipe that doesn't exist? Or are you gonna go do something right now and do something that brings you closer to greatness? That's your choice. And your problem is you're not intentional and deliberate. You wake up on Monday and you might be strong, but by Wednesday, are you hearing what I'm telling you? You're not intentional and deliberate. You are hoping that the best is gonna happen to you and the best never happens to you. You gotta be intentional and deliberate, whether you're making money or not making money. You gotta decide that you're gonna do something and you gotta do it every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday. The problem with some of you in this room, you're not intentional and deliberate. You're a good person that just hopes the good stuff is gonna happen to you. You still got work to do. Stay on that basketball court. Stay on that football field. F all the homies texting and calling and trying to make you feel bad about being so focused. It's grind season, homie. It's not about today, it's about the future.
There's only two ways you can be. You can be the person who learns a little bit, who does a little bit, and then who decides that this it really isn't for them and moves on to something else and repeats that cycle over and over and over again. Or you can be the person who's committed. You can be the person who says, this is going to fucking work no matter what happens. No matter how frustrated I get, no matter how angry I get, no matter what happens in the world, no matter what, I'm fucking doing this. Those are the people that are going to win. You got to stop telling yourself that you're doing enough. You have to do more. In life, it's never enough until you feel this overwhelming feeling of, oh, shit, man, I'm out working the trial. I'm out working everybody. I'm doing more. Once you get there, that's when you fucking know you've done enough. You got to do your best work when you're at least motivated. So those days you don't want to do it, you got to second the fuck up to do it. People who do stuff consistently and on time, they surpass people who talented and gifted. You guys have got to believe in yourself. Headstrong, mentally tough. That's the only way to the bullshit here in life. Winners, the difference between them and the spectators is that the winners have a belief that overrides the crowd's disbelief every single time. Their belief is so strong, even though they hit failure, they get knocked on the ass. They're finally the intentional for you to stand back up again, face that same challenge, learning from the previous mistakes, and make it happen. Winners fail a million times. What makes them a winner is that they believe it, they're headstrong. Nothing's gonna stop them. There is no excuse for not being the hardest worker. Yeah, someone might be bigger, stronger, faster, or quicker, younger, whatever else, but there is no excuse to not be the hardest fucking worker there. No longer are we gonna accept rhymes and society's rhymes of reason that we are average. Average is a weak mentality. We must believe it so much so that we're arrogant about it. We must be pissed off for excellence. The easy route never pays well. The only route in life that pays well is the hard route. You work it out, you wanna die. Feel the death happening in you. Feel the pain happening in your legs as you rep out one more squat. Cause it'll be all the more pleasurable when you reach the inevitable other end of the spectrum where you're laying in your hammock. Sitting on a protein shake. Boy, I really went hard. I really went hard on that set. I really went hard in school. I really went hard in my career. I really went hard in life. Go hard! Die hard! Life can throw you some curves. And it's not just the things that you see coming, but sometimes it's the things that you didn't see coming that hit you out of nowhere, that set you back in such a way that it seems like you can't get over it. And you've reached your limit and your bandwidth is full. And you already said, I can't take another thing. And then out of nowhere, here comes something you didn't see coming and you're in it. And in your homes, somewhere in your heart, these words are echoing. Am I going to make it? When you get into a tight spot and everything goes against you until it seems that you cannot hold on for a minute longer, never give up then, for that is just the place and time that the tide will turn. There are times when your energy feels so depleted that you want to give up that it looks just totally impossible. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, don't give up then. That's when you've got to fall forward, when life is kicking dirt in your face. Don't give up then. That's when most people turn back. As long as you're alive, there is hope. You're still alive. You're still here. It's never too late. And it's never too dark. And we can always turn things around there's going to be bad days there's going to be dark days but you got to embrace it because that pain is what makes you stronger pain is the high cost of growth if you want to grow up you want to be mature there is no way to do it without pain you can't grow up on easy street and the very thing that discourages you is the very thing that develops you. What I need you to do is I need you to find a reason to keep going. And if you can find a reason to keep going, I know you're strong enough to do it because you know it. And every human has what it takes to get past whatever they're going through if they decide to push through it. Tragedy and trials come to everybody. Only the strong survive. You have the opportunity to show the world what you are really made of. And there are those of you who were this close 
But you compromised. You let your feelings get the best of you. And you let a little pain stop you from your dream. Girl, you was there. You was running your business. You were there. I didn't quit because people didn't understand. I worked harder when people didn't support me. You better grind because if you don't, you'll be stuck at that adversity for the rest of your life. Whatever it is, you'll be stuck there. Why don't I get something for it? You ain't got to have the best hand in life. You ain't got to start with the two-parent background. You ain't got to start with wealth. You ain't got to start with your parents graduated. It's not the hand that you dealt. It's how you play your hand. When people die or people get sick or something happens in your life, if all you're doing it for is a car and a house, that can stop you. But if you're doing it for your mom, for your siblings, for your family, for your community, nothing can stop you. You cannot be broken. When you have an intrinsic goal, when you're doing it because you value it, when you're doing it because you can, when you're doing it because it represents who you are, when it's internal, nothing can stop you. No mountain, no trial, no tribulation, nothing can stop you when it's deeper than just money and stuff. I can. I, can. I will. I, will. I, must. I must. It's going to rain sometimes. I will. I will. You're going to feel discouraged sometimes. I will. I will. No matter what the obstacle, I will. I will. I will. I will. I, will. I, will. I, must. I must. What's that thing that's going to pump you up and get you over that mountain? What's going to pump you up and get you past that disease? What's going to pump you up and get you past bankruptcy? What's going to pump you up and get you to the other dog on side? Despite the circumstance, you can win. Despite the adversity, you can win. I'm trying to tell you, you can win. I'm trying to tell you, I don't care how big the giant is, you can win. I want you to go in confidence that you've never had before. And every giant in your life, slay him. You go back and slay him. Don't kill him, slay him. My glory doesn't happen in front of a crowd. It doesn't happen in a stadium or on a stage. There are no medals handed out. It happens in the darkness of the early morning, in solitude, where I try, and I try, and I try again, with everything I have to be the best that I can possibly be, better than I was yesterday better than people thought I could be, better than I thought I could be, then claim one victory that no one can ever take away from me, ever. A victory that is earned every single day. A victory of determination and will and discipline. A victory achieved because I will not stop. It's the character who you are. It's not the title that makes you. It's not the success that makes you. The character defines the success, defines the fame, and it starts right there. Championships aren't won in the theater of the arena. They're won in the thousands of hours in the training room, in the labs, in the 5 a.m. runs, and it's raining, when everyone else is sleeping. That's when it's won. How you hold yourself in the small things of life. Build the character winning blocks of the things that we'll remember for. Do the job right or don't do it at all. That's the same person who has his hand raised on the podium one day. Same mother It's how you look at something. If your name's attached to it, then you do it right. The best of your ability every single time. Some of y'all so caught up on the game that you don't get it. It is in practicing. It is in eating right. It is in making good decisions that you look a certain way. It is how you practice. It is what you do that makes you look like you look. It is the process of the grind that shapes you and forms you. It's not the game. And that's why most of y'all get beat in the game or make mistakes in the game because you think grinding is what happens when the sun comes out. You think grinding is what happens when the lights come on. You think grinding is what happens when people get in the stage. That's not grind. The real grind is in the dark when nobody sees you, when nobody knows what you're doing. When you studying without coach, when you putting in those extra reps, when you watching those videos and you getting inspired, when you change your music, it's the process that makes you sweet. And the problem with some of y'all is you want somebody else to support your dream. It's yours. If you want it to happen, get your butt up and make it happen. If you want it to happen, rise and grind. Because this is my time. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Ain't no such thing as tomorrow. We only got today. If you can't right now, there's no one looking, man. And how you hold yourself, how you see yourself, what do you do when no one's watching? If you do it then, I guarantee you, you'll be doing it when everyone's watching.
Nobody's coming. Nobody's coming to tell me to turn the TV off. Nobody's coming to get me out the door and exercise. Nobody's coming to write the business plan for me. I gotta do it all myself. And many of you are not where you're supposed to be. Not because you're not gifted, not because you're not talented. You have absolutely no discipline. You keep cutting yourself slack. You keep telling yourself you did enough. You keep letting yourself off the hook. It's time you punish you. From now on, you're not going to hold any other human more accountable than you hold yourself. It's high time that discipline became your best friend, your daily companion. It's time to face yourself. You're the only one tripping you up. Look in the mirror and tell yourself, no more messing around. You got to get real doggish. You got to get real dirty if you want to make it. It's these moments where you're tested by life, these decisions we make on a daily basis. Do we get up early and go for a run? Or do we hit the snooze button? Do we go that extra rep in the gym when our body's dying and we push past that? Or do we throw in the towel and give in to the pain? Those inches you need to be number one are around us every single day. It's when you get up that day and do those little tiny things, the little details in life. That's what adds up to be the difference between the champion and average. You think I don't get tired? Of course I do. But I've got reasons bigger than my fatigue. I'm out here setting the pace, making sure every day counts. Because I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for my wife. I'm doing it for my kids. This is my zone. And I'm a Ain't nothing going to stand in my way. I'll work every day if I have to. Whatever it takes. I need you to think about the people you're doing this for. And when that alarm goes off in the morning, you need the thought of those people you're grinding for to be louder than that alarm clock. So when it goes off and you're just not feeling it, you gotta think, do I hit the snooze button or do I get up and grind for those people? You have got to push yourself. Your family's counting on you. Your dreams are counting on you. Everything you've ever wanted is counting on you. So all those days you don't feel like getting up, just think about them. You don't get to success by quitting when you're tired. You get there by quitting when you're finished, when you're done. You don't stop when you're tired, you stop when you're done. Dreams ain't easy. If they were, everyone would have everything they ever wanted. Waking up with zero energy won't cut it. You can't outsmart the grind. Some days, you just gotta have the grit and the hustle to get your up and get to work. You don't make millions just cause you're talented or skilled. You make millions cause you execute. You've been taking your sweet ass time and that sh has gotta stop. You can't afford to move at a snail's pace in a world that's racing by. You're not a bad person for it, but you'll remain in the middle of the pack if you can't pick up the pace. It's time to kick it into high gear. You dedicate yourself to the daily grind, even when the high of motivation wears off. Success is always full price every single time. There are no discounts, no markdowns. It's gonna cost you sweat, blood, and tears. So quit looking for the easy way out. There isn't one. Discipline is about doing what you hate, doing the shit that makes you uncomfortable, that pisses you off. But you grit your teeth and get it done like it's your passion. It's about embracing the suck, lacing up those boots when you'd rather be kicking them off. It's dragging your out of bed when the blankets feel like a cozy cocoon of comfort, but you rise up anyway because there's work to be done. That feeling of dread, that resistance, it's a sign that you're on the right track because real growth doesn't happen in the comfort zone. It happens in the trenches, in the grind, where every move is a battle. It's easy to do what you love. It's a whole other ball game to do what you hate with the intensity and drive as if you love it. That's the essence of true discipline. It's not about mood or feelings. It's about commitment. It's about saying, my feelings, I've got a mission and I'm not leaving until it's done. You won't always stay motivated. 
There's gonna be times where you're dragging ass, and all you want to do is collapse and go eat like crap. You have to learn to get yourself up and moving, and it's the last thing in the world you want to be doing. So that's what separates people. It's the difference between the dreamers and the doers. Between the people who talk a good game and those who play to dominate. Regret weighs tons, but discipline weighs ounces. It's much easier to look back on a life full of discipline, knowing you made the right choice in the moment, rather than looking back on a life full of excuses, full of regret. Regret that you didn't pay the price for greatness. Discipline doesn't give a flying about what you feel like doing. It's the relentless, unwavering force that keeps you moving forward when everything else screams for you to stop. It's doing the work, the hard, gritty, soul-testing work. And not just enduring it, but owning it like a boss. You make it happen. You get it done. Because that's who you are. A person of action, a person of your word. You stay true to what you said you'd do, not for glory, not for applause, but because that is the standard you hold yourself to. Long after the mood has left, you're still there, grinding, pushing, striving, because that's what it takes, that's integrity, that's honor, that's real power. And you have that power within you. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. Your brain is the only thing you have when you're going through depression, when you're going through hard times, you're going through death, real life sh You're alone. There's 24 hours in a day where you're alone in this brain and your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways and it wants to control you and pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain and your brain controls you, you're you got to tell your brain where you want to go and how you want to go and how you want to get there. You got to control it. If not, it's over. Where are the warriors that say, I'm going to make a decision and I'm keeping it. And regardless of how you feel about it, it doesn't matter if the world is crumbling or down around you. It doesn't matter what's happening. Just do the thing every single day day whether you feel like it or not oh I don't feel so good today get your lazy sick out of bed your only commitment is to the activity not to the grand scheme not to the big picture not to the implications of what it is that you're doing it's to do the thing habits are the building blocks of our lives it's what you do every single day that matters more than anything devote yourself to something bigger be decisive about what you're going to do. Say, I'm going to do it and that's it. And then be disciplined about getting it done every single day whether you feel like it or not. Greatness will cost you something. It's going to cost you some time. It's going to cost you some energy. It's going to cost you some sacrifice. It's going to cost you some resources. It's going to cost you some hours of your life laying down, paying the price, going the extra mile, doing what other people are not willing to do. Greatness is not cheap. Greatness always costs more. That's why there's not many people who achieve greatness. They're not willing to pay the price. That's the kind of attitude you need. That's the attitude of a winner, is I will do whatever it takes. Don't be a wimpy person who's afraid of everything hard. Do not take the easy way out. You need to train that instinct, your instinct. Train it to say, get up, go, fight on. Get your brain in shape. Put your brain through the paces. Rid your fat brain of fear, doubt, self-loathing, intimidation, get rid of it. Don't you let another motherfucker put his or her limitations on you. Nobody can tell you what they can't do but you. If at the end of the day you want to achieve something that other people have not been able to achieve, you've got to be willing to do things that other people are not willing to do. Where other people bend and break, you've got to get stronger. Where other people fall by the wayside, you've got to keep going. You've got to set the bar ridiculously high and then surpass all expectations. When your life gets getting hard and life is coming at you, you will panic and you will forget who the you are. 
Because in the worst of times, you are alone. You must get your fucking self out of the fucking sewer. No one's coming in the fucking sewer to get you. It's dark, it's nasty, there's rats down there. It's your brain. You are the only person that can pull yourself out. Anything you focus your mind on, you can change. You don't like the way your life is going, you're the only one who can change it. You don't have to be an alcoholic. You don't have to be a failure. You don't have to be anything you don't want to be. If you ever decide to change your mind. And if you're having one of those dark days, it's okay. It's okay to feel that darkness. Embrace that darkness. I don't care who you are. I don't care what title you hold. I don't care what position you're in. I don't care what it looks like to people. This is not about people. This is about your life. Don't you quit. Don't give up. You have to get up. In the chaos is an opportunity. It is the chaos of the time that creates the conqueror in the man. Those exceptional people who are uncomfortable with the times that rise to the challenge because they refuse to allow the chaos around them to determine the conqueror within them. People who resist the toll to go down and stand fiercely in spite of opposition and say, I'm going to do it anyway. You're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go. Move so you can grow. So you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? Start working and developing yourself now and prepare yourself for what it is that you want. Because you expect to get it. You don't like where you're at? Don't worry about it. It's just a step. You don't like how you feel right now? Stop crying. It's just a step. Why are you up all night over a step? Why would you be weeping and worried over one step in the whole topography of your life? You can't judge your life by where you are in this moment. Do you not know that where you are will pass? What you're worried about will pass? Don't you understand that one day you will look back and laugh at the thing that kept you up all night? Don't you understand that it's not nearly as major as you thought it was? You can live without your house. You can live without your car. You can live without your friend. You can live without your husband. You can live without your wife. There's more in you right now that's represented in your bank account. There's more in you right now that's being reflected by your life right now. Your life is not a true reflection of your potential. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to stand up. You can't talk out now. You can't fold now. It's not there to stop you. It's only there to challenge you. You want to grow through it. Tough times never last, but tough people do. You're going through hell? Don't stop. Keep moving. You keep on swinging and the universe will yield to you. Energy is measured by motion. That's why the devil wants you to sit. Shut up and feel sorry for yourself. But try to blow the devil's mind this morning. Just when you think he got you down, you ought to shock him and press. Is it easy? No. Is it worth it? Yes. Yes, your life is worth it. I came to tell somebody you got just enough strength left. You got just enough time left. You got just enough energy left to run from the chaos. Stand still and let the chaos run from you. You're going to go through many storms where your life is going to be hard. And it'll seem unbearable at times. There are all types of storms. There are emotional storms where you're worried. Something that you hope won't happen or something that has already happen. With emotional storms, you can find yourself stressed out. In an emotional storm, you can find yourself depressed, mentally fragile because of the experiences, the turbulence that you have gone through. The state of this world can have you in a state of confusion and, and a heavy cloud over your life. It's very depressing. A storm is going to come. I don't care who you are. No one is exempt. It's called life, ladies and gentlemen. So how do you handle it when you're in the storm? You must have faith. You must have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. The strength and the courage to make it through, the enduring power, the ability to persevere. 
to handle it. It will pad you. The inner power to overcome, to come back again. So in order to begin to prepare for the storm, you've got to go within and start working on yourself. You've got to get grounded. You've got to train your mind to serve you. Meditation is one of the ways in which you can do that. Reading is one of the ways that you can do that. Listening to music is one of the ways that you can do that. Exercise is one of the ways in which you can do that. Things that you can do to still your mind, to clear your thoughts so you can think. I had a program for myself. I have books that I read that inspire me, tapes that I listen to that fire me up. Because you're going to have sometimes low moments when you won't want to get out of bed. You just want to stay there. There are times you won't want to come out the house. There are times you'll be feeling bad and don't know why. What's wrong? I don't know. Just leave me alone. The first tendency is to panic. When they said, your mother has breast cancer. I panic immediately. I start grieving and crying. I tell the girls, oh God, I can't handle this. I never thought this day would come. I can't deal with this pain. You got to talk to yourself sometimes, you hear me? You got to talk to yourself, and yes, I was scared. Leslie, get up, get up, Leslie, get up. Come on, man, it's easy to have faith when mama's got her health and all is well. Come on, get up and come to the house. She needs us now. Come on, dear man, come on in this room and face it. Be still and know that all is well to pull this through. And I made up my mind, I don't care what it takes. I don't care how many speeches I have to give, how many seminars I have to give. I know I ain't got the money. I know I don't have the education, but I ain't gonna let that stop me. I'm gonna do it. And yes, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be difficult, and you get more no's than you do yes, but when you hold out, things will begin to happen. You won't even understand how. See what the storm does, ladies and gentlemen, it empowers you. It strengthens you. When you go through a storm, when you come through that kind of experience and able to reclaim your life, you come back with a certain kind of power and you'll never be the same again after that experience. There are certain things when you go through those things and you come up out of those things, you come up a different kind of person, different spirit, different power, different energy that builds character. Don't ever say when you're going through some rough time, I'm going through a really bad, tragic time. No. So I'm going through a character building experience. Tough times never last, but tough people do. You should take pride in wanting to quit and not quitting. Hey, it's really hard right now, dude. You're really struggling right now. But here's the thing. Right now is when everybody else quits. Right now is when everybody else is going to fall behind. Right now is when everybody else decides to do something that's easier or faster or not as hard. And that's what gets you ahead. That's what gets you to have pride. Because those struggles, those feelings, those things that are difficult, they are there to test you. This pain, this conflict, this tragedy, this tribulation is the test. Don't fail it. Stay strong. Don't ever quit. Struggle is a privilege. Hardship is a privilege because those struggles, those hardships, those things that you face will turn you into an unstoppable motherfucking machine. So if you want to create super high confidence, super high self-esteem, super high momentum, that feeling I'm super powerful, I'm invincible, I'm the fucking man or I'm the fucking woman, you have to take pride in not quitting when other people are going to quit. You have to take pride in executing your job to the very best of your ability when everything around you is going wrong. That's what gets you out of the storm. You can't just focus on this moment. You've got to hold the vision. Hold the vision of things improving. Hold the vision of your health coming back. Hold the vision of being financially independent and debt free. Hold the vision of your relationships working out. Hold the vision of everything being all right because it'll give you power, give you strength, give you faith, give you patience, give you perseverance. It'll give you the ability to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. And when you discipline your emotions and you don't allow them to control you, when you tell yourself, I'm in charge here, I set the course for my life, these storms that I face, they do not have power over me. When you declare that to yourself, the limits for you become non-existent. Think about how many years, months, hours, seconds you have wasted. Success is a very lonely road. There are very few people who are willing to go through the pain, the hardship, the sacrifices, 
the agony of the process in order to succeed. It's these moments when you feel the urge to quit. You feel the urge to say to yourself, it can't be done. I don't think I can make it. I don't think I have what it takes. This is the point where everything's gonna go south on you. And you're gonna think this is it for you. This is how I end. This is the end of my journey. Now you have a choice. You can accept that or you can decide I will not be denied. This will not be it for my life. At some point or another, you gotta make a stand. If you're gonna change, if you're gonna improve your life, if you're gonna improve your situation, you gotta make a declaration that I will not be stopped. I'm gonna do whatever it takes and one way or another, I will win. Instead of backing down, instead of giving into the struggle, you push yourself forward into the unknown. You have got to proactively prepare to catch yourself. When you find yourself getting negative with people that you have allowed to push your buttons, when you find yourself becoming negative about what's happening to you and the circumstances that you're involved in, you reinforce your mind with positivity, telling yourself everything is okay. I'm gonna get through this. This is not the end. This is only the beginning for me. It's crucial to always be on the lookout for those moments when external factors threaten to sway our inner balance. You've got to be your own biggest supporter. Stop letting outsiders get in your head. You've got to pump yourself up. Remind yourself of all that you've been through before. And these things you're facing now, they're nothing. This isn't your first dogfight, and it won't be your last. Everybody hits that wall at one moment or another. That wall shocks most people. That wall knocks the life out of most people. That wall is painful. But the thing that separates the average people and the people who win is how they respond to that wall. Most people choose to give in. They can't handle the sting of being hit, so they fold. But there are some rare individuals who decide, I will not give up. I will not give in. And I will succeed. I will not allow the pain to beat me. These are the people who know there is no gain without pain. There is no testimony without a trial. It is meant to be hard. That rough process is necessary in order to produce the great things in your life. You have not seen the best days of your life yet. The greatest is still yet to come. And you must keep pushing yourself to move forward even when it hurts. Even when your legs want to give out and you're crying yourself to sleep at night and everything is fighting against you, you must keep fighting. When it feels like the entire world is against you, I need you to reinforce your self-belief and muster yourself up, telling yourself in the mirror, you can do this, you can handle this. This challenge isn't bigger than you. You can get through this. And when you get through this, you're gonna be bigger, you're gonna be better, you're gonna be bolder because you fought your way through it. It's only here to make you stronger. But you have to start living your life in expectation. You have got to start expecting great things to happen for you in order for it to happen. If you expect bad things to happen, that's what's going to happen. But if you expect the best, that's exactly the direction you'll head. Your belief is what dictates the direction you steer your life. So you have to be consciously aware of the thoughts going on in your mind, focusing only on allowing positive, productive ideas to be dwelled on in your head. This is how winners are made. They don't allow the idea of losing to sink into their brain. They reject any thought of failure, of loss, of decline. They focus only on making improvement. They focus only on the strategies and opportunities to make their lives and other people's lives better. No guts, no glory. You've got to be willing to face rejection and no. Again and again and again. Willing to face defeat. Again and again and again. And every time life knocks you down, you jump up and say, no matter what it takes, I will win. It takes guts. You gotta dig down deep and gut it out. Keep on going again and again and again until you make it happen. Because you know that it's possible. Your self-belief must outweigh others' disbelief. Your belief must be so strong that you block out the noise of everyone around you. And all you hear is your internal dialogue telling you, I can do this. I will do this. I must do this. And no matter what it takes, with every fiber of my being, I am going to win.
If you are self-motivated and self-regulated, you can have it, you can be it, you can do it. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe in your abilities. You've got to believe in your service, your company, your ideas, unquestionably. Take that leap of faith. Trust yourself and believe and know within yourself that everything is going to be all right. If you've got that drive, that inner fire, then there's nothing stopping you. You can have whatever you set your mind to. Be what you dream to be. Do what you've always wanted. It all starts with you, your motivation, your discipline. Harness that and the world is yours. Keep dreaming. Keep looking at your dream. Keep focusing on your dream. Keep going after the dream because that's where true success is. The people that are running after their dream, they know they're going to have hard times, but they keep on running because they're saying within themselves, I am the one and I will win.